Soldiers from the 15th Separate Artillery Reconnaissance Brigade Black Forest, with the help of the 128th Separate Mountain Assault Brigade launched a Himara strike on a concentration of Russian occupiers, where there were at least 30 to 40 people. The 128th Joint Assault Brigade transmitted coordinates for fire adjustment, which allowed the elimination of more than 20 soldiers of the Russian armed forces, writes the telegram channel of the Melitopol Partisan Detachment of General Chereshnia, Nilea Chereshnia. It was not all over with one blow, as reported. The Ukrainian military launched a second strike during the evacuation of the wounded and the collection of the bodies of the dead occupiers, using an evacuation group, several civilian cars and a truck. The video shows the use of cluster munitions to hit an evacuation group near the village of Tavria, Vasilevsky district, Zaporizhia region. President Joe Biden has for the first time authorized the use of U.S.-supplied long-range missiles by Ukraine to strike inside Russia, according to one U.S. official and three people familiar with the matter. The decision is a major U.S. policy shift and comes as Biden is about to leave office and incoming President-elect Donald Trump has said he would bring about a swift end to the war and has expressed skepticism over continued support by the United States. The weapons are likely to be used in response to North Korea's decision to send thousands of troops to Russia in support of Russian President Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine, according to one of the people. The official and the people familiar with the matter were not authorized to discuss the decision publicly and spoke on condition of anonymity. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and many of his Western supporters have been pressing Biden for months to allow Ukraine to strike military targets inside Russia with Western-supplied missiles, saying the U.S. ban had made it impossible for Ukraine to try to stop Russian attacks on its cities and electrical grids. Some supporters have argued that this and other U.S. constraints could cost Ukraine the war. The debate has become a source of disagreement among Ukraine's NATO allies. Biden had remained opposed, determined to hold the line against any escalation that he felt could draw the US and other NATO members into direct conflict with Russia. Ukrainian military political analyst with the Information Resistance Group, Alexander Kovalenko, believes that Putin will never agree to Donald Trump's plan to freeze the conflict along the current front line. Let's look at the situation from the Russian perspective and their violated constitution, which claims Kherson, Zaporizhia, Donetsk, and Luhansk regions as part of the Russian Federation. The question arises, can the Russians fully capture Kherson, Zaporizhia, Donetsk, and, of course, Luhansk, where they are still struggling in Bilohorivka, in time for Trump's inauguration? I don't think so," said Kovalenko on Espresso TV. According to military political analyst, Putin will never agree to Donald Trump's plan to freeze the conflict along the current front line. Putin will face questions. What have we agreed to if part of our so-called territories is under Ukrainian control? Therefore, Donald Trump will have to fulfill his promise to supply Ukraine with more weapons than the Biden administration did, Kovalenko emphasized. It may become more destructive U.S. weapons. Donald Trump's rise to power in the United States has become a chance to quickly end the Russian war against Ukraine. The future peace agreement will probably not provide for the restoration of the country's territorial integrity. However, Kiev will definitely avoid capitulation. Politico journalist Jamie Detmer writes about this in his opinion piece. He claims that not only in the West, but also in Kyiv, there is a secret relief that Trump, once in power, could quickly put an end to the Russian aggression. Ukraine, the author notes, will have to sacrifice not only part of its territory, but also its plans to join NATO. Without these points, Moscow will probably not agree to end the war. Some call it a lousy deal. And it is. In fact, it will undermine confidence in the West. And it is a crying shame that we are where we are. But if you spend decades cutting your armies and your defense industry and you don't draw mandatory red lines, that is exactly what happens. Detmer writes, 
He warned that Putin's impunity in this story would inspire all the world's autocrats, showing them that they can do whatever they want, that they can undermine the foundations of the world order. The world will definitely not become safer, but there is no other alternative, unless it is a perpetual war in which the Western powers either become warring parties themselves, or at least put their economies on a war footing to supply Ukraine with much greater volumes than they do now. That is the harsh reality, the article says. Russia boasts that it is making gains in Kursk and within Ukraine. However, that belies the fact that Russia is, in fact, losing incredible quantities of soldiers. At this point, signing up to join the Russian army is signing one's own death sentence, says Jake Bro, according to the Kiev Post. Jake Bro, who is well known to those who follow Ukraine's war against Russian aggression for his dynamic, interesting and accurate analysis of what is transpiring in Russia's war against Ukraine. Through his battlefield map updates and articulate explanations, the war commentator has developed a strong following that regularly checks in to see what he thinks will happen next. Bro, in this interview with Kyiv Post, explains what internal pressures Russia is now facing that could well lead the world's largest country to a brutal defeat. Bro gives his candid analysis about what outcome the Kremlin is hoping to see following this November's presidential election in the United States and expresses why he is a strong supporter of Vice President Kamala Harris, despite the arguments that some Ukraine supporters who back Trump make to argue that the former president would do a better job of helping Ukraine to win. Formerly, Bro was a nuclear and missile operations officer in the United States Air Force for six years, where he was in charge of the operations, maintenance and security of the Minuteman III Intercontinental Ballistic Missile System. Currently, Bro is a commentator on the war in support of Ukraine and operates a YouTube channel. According to Western assessments, Russian casualties in the war so far tally up to 115,000 killed and 500,000 wounded. The staggering death toll, estimated to be 10 times higher than Soviet losses during the war in Afghanistan, is difficult to verify but is consistent with the independent open source reports. Using official reports, online obituaries on social media and images of tombstones, the BBC Russian service with the independent website MediaZona have identified the names of 75,000 dead Russians. They estimate the real tally to be between 113,000 to 160,000 deaths. We've seen a significant increase over the past six months, said a spokesperson at MediaZona. There's a lot of crazy headlines, especially concerning the arrival of these 10,000 or so North Koreans. But I think that uh, Putin has given a hard deadline to his generals. And unlike previous deadlines that they've all failed to meet, this one might not be elastic. And the reason why is I think Putin is trying to retake this territory in Kursk prior to Donald Trump taking office on January 20th. There will be talks. There will be negotiations. I'm not saying they're going to be successful. We don't know what Trump's plan really is. I, I, I honestly think he doesn't have a plan. He's coming up with it now. But Putin doesn't want to talk about Kursk. He doesn't want to talk about Ukraine giving back territory in Russia in exchange for anything else. That is a position to negotiate from weakness, not from strength. This is not what the Russians want. So at the moment, casualties are going insane on the battlefield. Just yesterday, uh, the estimated casualty report for the Russian forces was almost 2,000 soldiers killed, captured, or wounded in a single day. This doesn't feel like progress for the Russians. They're panicking about this chunk of the territory, about 1,000 square kilometers, and they want to pretend like this never happened.